Hello everyone and welcome back. So this time we're going to be solving yet another problem. This one with a temperature dependent diffusion coefficient. So a little different than what we've seen in the past. So what does it ask us? Well, it says calculate the diffusion coefficient for copper and aluminum at 500 degrees Celsius. Okay, not too bad there. Second one is what time will be required at 600 degrees Celsius to produce the same diffusion result in terms of concentration at a specific point, as for 10 hours at 500 degrees Celsius. Well, that's a lot to look at, but here, let's look at the first one, and it's copper and aluminum. Okay, now our equation for that temperature-dependent diffusion coefficient is gonna be D is equal to the pre-exponential constant times exponential function of negative Q, so that's the activation energy, over RT. Now this is specific to every individual species. So you're going to have to look up in table 5.2 to figure out what d naught and your activation energy are. And they would come out to be d naught is equal to 6.5 times 10 to the negative fifth. And um, our activation energy would be equal to 136,000 joules per mole. Be very careful if they have kilojoules instead, but this is joules per mole. Now, if I plug that into my equation here, let's see what I get. I'm going to get, okay, I'll go ahead and write everything out, 6.5 times 10 to the negative fifth meters squared per second. I'm sorry, I'm trying units here. Um, exponential, wrong ratio. Of negative 136,000 joules per mole all over 8.31 joules per mole Kelvin. That's going to be multiplied by, let's see, let me make sure I got everything correct. So 773 Kelvin. Now, first thing, where did that come from? Remember, we always use absolute units for any sort of temperature equation in this class. And so Celsius, that's relative. And so we have to convert to Kelvin. The way to do that is simply that the temperature in Kelvin is going to be equal to the temperature in degrees Celsius plus 273. Now, if I do all that correctly and I plug in my calculator and hopefully, just hopefully, it all comes out correctly. Fingers crossed there. I would get 4.15 times 10 to negative 14 meters squared per second. Okay, so that solves my first part of the problem. The second one's a little bit more difficult. The second one is a little bit more difficult. So we're trying to figure out what the diffusion coefficient would have to be if we wanted to have the same effect, sorry, what time we would need if we wanted to have the same effect um, at a particular point. Don't say which point, just any point. So how do we get that? Well, if you look at diffusion, it is a number as a function of meters squared per second. That's per time. So if you have diffusion coefficient and you multiply it by time, you're gonna be left with what's effectively an area, or in this case, it is the number of you know atoms or molecules that have passed through a particular surface area. Because remember, diffusion is all about passing through something. Okay. And so what we realized then is, okay, if we want to have the same effect, then I'm going to have to have my diffusion coefficient times time be the same in both cases. So, you know, we know what this one is. That's given in our problem statement. We know this one because we just calculated it. We want to find this, and we don't know that our diffusion coefficient is at 600 degrees Celsius. Now, that's not hard to find, though, because all these numbers we calculated earlier are the same. We just have to change our temperature. So I'll do that. I'll go ahead and say, well, D at 600 is going to be equal to 6.5 times 10 to the negative fifth meters squared per second. Exponential, hopefully I can fit it, negative 136,000 joules per mole all over 
8.31 joules per mole Kelvin. That's the gas constant in case you didn't remember that. Times 873 Kelvin because I added 273 to 600 to get my gas constant. That would come out to be 4.69 times 10 to the negative 13 meters squared per second. Okay, but that's not our answer yet. Don't stop there. You still have a little more to go. Luckily, you know, I teach everything. A lot of questions online, so you know you can't really make that mistake. But just in case you're doing this by paper on paper, don't stop there. So now we're going to go back to this little equation we saw earlier for the effect. What we need to do then is we're going to solve for our time at 600 degrees Celsius. So I will have D500, T500, all over D600 is going to be equal to my time at 600. And if I manage to plug this in, what I'll get is it's going to be 0.88 hours. Now, this is the difference of 100 degrees Celsius. However, earlier it was 10 hours, and now it's 0.88 hours. 100 degrees Celsius had a factor of 10 improvement, at least in the speed of this effect happening. Now, 100 degrees Celsius is a large change for humans. That's going from frozen water to boiling. That's as much as more or less we can more than we can handle. Um, still, this shows the effect temperature has. It is an exponential effect. Um, and it is going to cause things to change more and more quickly the higher your temperature. Because you have more vacancy, which means more diffusion. And you have more movement, which means more diffusion. So, be thinking about that. Okay, so we solved this problem. I hope it helps you. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.